Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here at my next YouTube video. This is going to be my next Quora news update video. And yep, there's just one piece of news uh, this time, um, which basically is just a few little pointers about book one. But uh, anyway, what it is, is that, um, as I said in I think my last video, uh, Mike uh, Dante DiMartino, obviously the co-creator of Avatar, was attending a event on June 26th in a Barnes & Nobles in LA. And it was this, this it was this panel that he was going to do with a bunch of other um, kind of I think comic writers and show um, kind of producers creators, and it was basically about fiction and you know uh, storytelling that sort of thing. So naturally, a, a lot of Avatar fans attended, and there was a Q and A. So um, Avatar slash core questions were asked, and you know while we didn't get an incredible amount of information out of this, we did get some interesting information. So I'm just going to go through that right now. What we did get. Um, Nothing book two was said, which was completely expected. I wasn't even looking for book two. You know, it's disappointing that he didn't mention anything, but obviously with SDCC coming up in just a few weeks, um, he was never going to say anything that important about book two. Uh, that news is coming probably <laughs> at SDCC. But book one questions were asked, and we did get some cool things. First one is that, uh, according to Mike, we, we may never get it revealed who Toph's husband is, who Lin's father is, uh, he said he doesn't see the need to tell us or to even know himself. Now, um, I'll, I'll just say one of the other points which he also mentioned. He also brought up uh, Toph's husband in relation to, I think when he was asked about Ursa and like stuff like that. And he mentioned that like, he, he needs, there, there needs to be unanswered questions, he basically said. And, I, and like, even if it's not the one we expect. So... I think what he's getting at there is that since the search is going to tell us what happened to Ursa, that he wants there to be another unanswered question, and that's going to be Toph's husband. Now, um, the problem I have with this is that it that's not a mystery. Toph's husband shouldn't be a mystery. It isn't a mystery. It hasn't been presented as a mystery. That's a character that you're basically saying you're never going to explore, which... I don't feel Toph's husband even needs to be explored, regardless of who it is. Like, unless it's, it's like one of the main characters, like, the, the, then they do need to be explored. But if it's just someone minor that we don't really know, if it is the Duke, or as many suspect, some other character, um, they don't need to go into depth. But the fact that they're really making a big deal about keeping this a secret is baffling to me. I have no idea why they're doing this. I have no idea why Mike has come out and basically said, yep, this is the big secret that we're never going to tell you. Why do you need to keep this a secret? Like, of anything in a show to do, to keep one of your main character's husbands, one of the main character who has a child, their father is a, a secret character, is baffling to me. Uh, as I said, it doesn't matter how mild they are, the fact that they're not going to mention it, I think this means a lot with regards to how, in, how in detail they're going to go into the gang's kind of adult lives. That To me, this suggests that we're never really going to get much on Toph when she's older, if they're going to have to maneuver every top story around her father because they're never going to reveal who she is. Now, obviously this could be an overreaction depending on, like, they obviously probably don't have any plans in place right now to tell those type of stories, but, you know, it really seems like Mike doesn't want to tell us um, who this is. You know? I, I get that he obviously didn't want to say it just then and there in the middle of the panel, this is who Top's husband is, because they maybe don't have that all that stuff planned out, maybe, but... I think it just sets a bad precedent going forward that the creators are kind of purposefully doing this, that they're kind of creating the universe going forward where they want to keep some things a mystery, they're specifically pointing, this is a mystery, we're never going to tell you guys that. Rather than just writing a story and seeing what mysteries come up and then decide, like, maybe exploring some of them, maybe not, they're just specifically deciding this is going to stay a secret, and to me that's a pretty odd way to write a story. Um, uh, a good example to use is probably Lost. Um, Lost is a show with a ton of mysteries, um, and it didn't answer them all by the end of it. But not all of them were needed to, because some of them were just so minor and kind of almost unnecessary that they didn't even need to. But uh, that's the thing they 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 never did it so much where like it was a character is the mystery, a character that isn't even in any way a mystery like it, it it's just really weird for me that this why he came out and said that 
we're, we're never going to get that. I don't see why you need to know. Um, and like, um, so so anyway, you know, I'll, I'll probably get kind of too bogged down if I go into this any longer. But anyway, next piece of information he said was, um, I think he was asked about how Amon could take people's bending away using blood bending. And he basically explained it. He just came out and explained what was happening here. And he said that because Amon is such a good bender, uh, blood bender, that he uh, he can bend the energy, which is chi, in another person's body and block it. So I assume by this what he means is that um, he can block people's chakra. So there's a chakra relating to earth, fire, water, um, and air. So there's one for each element. So I assume that's more or less what he was doing. And in the process, maybe didn't uh, block cores air chakra because he's never chi blocked an airbender before or else it's just he generally blocked a lot of the chi paths around her body something like that so that's kind of explained that's kind of what i was thinking in the first place when i first watched the show um that that kind of makes sense so it's nice to get the explanation there um and final thing i'll mention about the top thing is just this so he came out and specifically explained this yet yeah, said that lynn's father was going to be a mystery to me this is a bit of a contradiction because to me, you didn't need to explain the technical details of how Amon the bloodbending worked, because more than likely it was never going to come up again. It's something that kind of is ability that seemed to die with um, no attack with Amon. It's that ability that seemed to die. Uh, Katara didn't know what was happening, um, and it was cu and it was uh, cured through. Uh, like what core was cured basically through Ang using avatar state which was kind of combination energy bending which would get make sense that that couldn't block it um, um and obviously core then using the same ability to unblock other people's bending that's great but you didn't need to explain you didn't that, that's something that you could have kept a mystery how exactly does it work let the speculation go into it because we kind of had the answer if you really go into it enough it's something you could definitely get out but to, to say like to come out and give details on something that you could have kept a mystery and then keep something which isn't a mystery a mystery is just really weird to me but as uh, so the third thing he said was that he was asked about mako i think and he was he was just very shocked at the amount he was honestly shocked with the amount of hate that mako gets from the fandom and I was really happy that he actually came out and said this because um, it's clear that when Michael Brown were writing the show, they they had no problem with what Mako did. No, I, I don't. I don't hate Mako at all. I I thought the romance in book two was done really well. It was really realistic. That it wasn't perfect. That they all made mistakes, especially Mako, and learned from them in the end. So I had no problem with it, and it, I think the fact that. Mike came out and said that he was really shocked kind of shows I think that a lot of people are a bit overreacting to Mako and I hope he doesn't basically get hated automatically in book 2 just for what came before that people are open to giving Mako a chance in book 2 and going forward so you know, hopefully the fandom kind of opens up a bit to Mako um, last thing was just that he said that um, he knew um, he from before uh, Sammy was initially planned to be an evil character so he didn't go into too much detail but I assume what he meant by that was that instead of choosing to side with her friend she sided with her father and became kind of his right hand person so I assume that's maybe what they meant by that but as they developed her character then they decided that it would actually be better for her that she turn out good so that's an interesting thing into production that goes to show that like oh they make these changes like Toph was initially planned to be a boy, but then it was decided that she was a girl. And did the same here, that Asami was initially planned to be evil, but she's actually eventually was developed into a good character. And I really like that because um, the whole kind of Asami kind of going against her father was probably one of the... Was it was a was a really minor I suppose in the grand scheme to show plot, but it worked really well with the little screen time it was given. Basically, that scene in this underneath the Saho mansion, and then the scene in the finale, like that worked really well for that. And there was just emotion shown to the two in between that before they met again. So I really liked that idea that they they were going one way and decided just no no we're gonna throw that out. She's good, and I like that. Um, so. You know, but that's all the information there was. Nothing, I suppose, incredible, but there are some interesting things here, definitely, going forward. Um, and uh, as you can probably tell, I'm, I'm a bit kind of annoyed with the whole 
Toph's husband thing and like what that maybe means going forward if there's any mysteries in the show um, but uh, overall you know they, he, he did say might so it's not that it's completely set in stone that we're never going to find out about that but uh, uh, it, it was just I found it a very weird thing to say a weird thing to keep a mystery but uh, sorry about this uh, just another piece of news literally just broke after I finished filming that kind of first segment but um, yep uh, from this tweet as you can see Nick TV, the official Nickelodeon Twitter account, has replied to someone saying that we're probably going to get book two news within the next month. Now, what exactly that means with SDCC less than a month away, not quite sure, because realistically Nick would have to start promoting Quora going to air at the latest about a month before the show airs, that they probably could do it like three weeks. So. Either way, it pretty much confirms that we're going to get some big book two news, um, before SDCC or at SDCC. Who knows really what Nick is actually getting at here? But anyway, it's a very good sign. I doubt it means too much, but it's nice to see Nick m actually mention book two, reply to someone about it, tell something interesting. That's great news to have. Uh, but, uh, I'll just end it here. That's all the news I have. Um, We'll discuss it on the podcast at, on Sunday, um, Avatar Online podcast, I believe episode 57 it's going to be this Sunday, and yeah, we'll also talk about some other stuff, I believe the episode we're going to be reviewing is uh, 109, The Waterbending Scroll, so check the podcast out on Sunday if um, you're interested, but uh, that's been this video, um, uh, thanks for watching, and bye.